Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the newest videos going up. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. How was your Hallow's Eve? Comment below. Let me know how it went. It was amazing on my side. And we are, as always, very celebratory type of family over here. So we are extremely ecstatic for the holidays. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you guys are excited the way we are for the holidays. All right. I know we're a bit behind, but we're going to kick off the monthly readings for all Zodiac signs. We're going to begin here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November 2022. Don't forget to hit that like, su subscribe button as well. Uh, so you guys can uh, get notified of the most recent videos going up, as you guys know. We have tons of new videos going up, a lot of spell work that is going to be going up these couple of months that are coming so we can prepare for the new year. So without further ado, let's get into your reading, Aries. How are you doing? Let's see what you can expect for this month of November. As you guys know, we just experienced a lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. If you guys want to know how this is going to impact and influence your life how it's going to play out you want to find the taurus placement in your chart what house is it in depending on the house that it's in that's going to be the theme that's going to be the situation or scenarios that are going to be really highlighted that are going to be playing out for the next coming six months in your life so obviously the sign of taurus is everything to do with material it is an earth sign it is about possessions. It is about value and your value and the value of others and things in your life. Uh, obviously, finances, all of that good stuff. So, all right, let's get into it, Aries. Let's see what's going on for your sign. November 2022. Here we go. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly. We're going to begin here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Here we go. All right. So first card here is the Seven of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles, King of Swords, King of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. So you are currently concluding a cycle in your life, Aries, um, where there were certain it could have almost felt like you missed an opportunity or there was an opportunity that was missed here. Uh, this could be in regards to your finances. This could be in regards to career. Uh, for others of you, it could have been the wanting to see the result of work that you've put in. Um, it could have been uh, perhaps for some of you guys trying to get that higher position. For others of you, it could have been the struggle of getting out of difficulties, financial constraints, and there is a revisiting of this situation. So for some of you guys, it could be that there is some type of communication that comes in for you guys for this month of November, where a masculine energy could be helping you or assisting you in opening a new path or bringing to you some type of offer. Now we go from the five of pentacles to the king of pentacles and 10 of pentacles. So this specific reading is what they're telling me here is your finances are going to be booming Aries. Uh, for some of you guys, this is finding a stable job. If you've been at, you know, doing temporary gigs or whatnot, it is finding a stable job for others of you. It is finding stability within your home life. Um, if it was a bit of feeling like there were, a lot of restrictions, a lot of difficulties or obstacles to overcome. You are definitely going into this month uh, very focused and more than focused, ending chapters for some of you guys here with the Ten of Swords. So it could have been a situation for some of you guys. Maybe you're dealing with someone from your past. Maybe it is the absolute giving and expecting something in return and not being able to see the reciprocation there. You're finally waking up. You're finally realizing your value. You're realizing your contribution to this relationship or this connection. This could be in general for some of you guys. This could be 
the realization that you're always there for people, that you're always going above and beyond for the people you love. But now something is happening where you're being able to fully see if there's reciprocation or not. And if there isn't, or there hasn't been reciprocation, it's almost like you're realizing your self-worth Aries. So I feel that for a lot of you Aries for the month of November, it's going to be about self-worth and it's the realization. So for a lot of you guys where you've been selling yourself short, are you pursuing a relationship that is uh, not giving or that is not willing to put the same effort that you've been putting? It is realizing, you know what, I've been doing this for quite a while and it's not working. I'm going to take my energy back. I am going to start focusing on myself. You want to do you, that's fine, but it's time I start doing myself as well. So it's almost like a revamping of how you see yourself and how you value yourself. For others, like I said, it could be a revisiting of a situation where there could have been a promotion coming up and they, it almost felt like it passed you by or like they didn't take notice or they didn't realize that you were the right candidate. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be playing out very different. For others of you, it could be that instead of giving you the position, they gave it to someone else. And now it's like they're doing a horrible job because they're just not capable. They don't have it in them uh, with all the expectations. And it's almost like they're coming back around trying to give you some type of opportunity or make it seem like it's an opportunity when all this time you've known you were the one that was right for that position. So it's almost like the universe is giving back to you right now, Aries. Um, and it's giving back to you because it could have felt, like I said, like there was a missed opportunity there, but it's finally coming back to you and you're being rewarded for this. All right, now let's go to Taurus, my lovely Taurus. As you guys know, we just experienced this lunar eclipse in your sign. So uh, with Taurus, obviously, if this is your sun sign, you're going to greatly be impacted with this lunar eclipse. Um Again, it's very important to see what house it's in for some of you guys. Um, as an example for my lovely Melissa, by the way, if you're watching, here you go. So she mentioned on my Instagram that she has her Taurus in the sixth house. So if you have, you know, the lunar eclipse that is going into your sixth house, how this is going to play out for you, sixth house is always to do with the daily routine. That is the natural house of Virgo. And Virgo is all about organizing. It's all about the everyday tasks, the, the, uh, the work environment, the work situation. It is all about the people that we're dealing with on everyday basis. Obviously, sixth house also has to do with health. So for some of you guys with this lunar eclipse, you may feel this major desire to want to revamp how you feel or your health, or if you're working out for some of you guys, you're picking up a regimen of exercising or taking care of better health of yourself. For others of you, sixth house also has to do with enemies. This is the enemy house. So for a lot of you guys with the lunar eclipse going in there, it is highlighting that. So it will be revealing to you people that are in your surrounding that perhaps you thought was a friend. And then you find out, well, they've been talking about you. Um, this is the, the, this is, like I said, the everyday house, this is a busy house. So it's about routine. You're going to feel like things are starting to pick up, especially for those of you guys that felt like, you know, your life has been a little bit stagnant or a little bit boring. Things start to pick up right here because that's where your lunar eclipse is happening. So it's highlighting all of that. And like I said, a major desire or want within you to take better care of yourself, um, this could be in many different aspects for some of you guys, it could be getting, you know, a haircut, getting a new, um, getting a new do a new look, et cetera. For others of you, like I said, work environment may feel a little bit more busier than usual, but this is also very in connect. This house is also very connection with your career, not necessarily career, but with your job. So for some of you guys, major changes in that job, major transformations, this is the opportunity that you've been waiting for, Taurus. If you're trying to snatch a higher position, do what must be done because the sixth house is not about laziness. It's about making and taking action. 
in order to be able to see the fruit of your labor. So again, it also helps you stand out to other people, to higher level authorities or a uh, higher level type of, uh, you know, your bosses, your management, et cetera. So it's a very, very busy, busy house for you, uh, Melissa. Uh, but it is, like I said, it definitely brings major transformation and changes regarding career, regarding your finances or how you're making money, um, as well as this is the, the health, this is the health house, you know, Virgo, uh, natural house. So a lot of, you know, what is it that we need to do to better ourselves? What is it that I need to do to get or to smash those goals? You're going to be much more motivated. That's for sure. All right. So let's see what Taurus can expect for this month of November, 2022. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go, Taurus. We have the Ace of Swords. Communication, Six of Pentacles here. We're just talking about the Sixth House, right? Page of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Two of Swords, and the Six of Swords. Okay, so you are definitely moving on, you're getting a lot of spiritual downloads right now, Taurus. Um, this is really helping you where it's going to help you. It's going to propel you to the next cycle of your life where you're going to be getting new ideas, new ideas that you can, you know, capitalize on. So for those of you Taurus out there that you've been getting these type of ideas in regards to starting a business or, um, to do certain things to side jobs or whatnot, really pay attention to those ideas because these are ideas that if you actively pursue and you actively move forward to make it happen, it's going to bring to you a lot of abundance, a lot of stability. Um, and it may start as something that you think is, you know, something I can do on the side and then it blows up or it grows to the point where you may actually get the opportunity of making a living through something that you love or enjoy doing. So again, a lot of spiritual downloads that um, you're in synchronization, the universe wants you to really focus, obviously on finances, right? Um, but stability, the stability and how you view stability and the worth that you're bringing into the work or the labor that you're doing. So it's almost like realizing, you know what? I've been working a lot. I've been putting going above and beyond, and they're not appreciating that at this point, I'm going to see where my worth or my value is somewhere else. Maybe they'll appreciate it better. I see some of you guys shopping around or looking at uh, different positions or a different company to work for. And there may actually be an opportunity that comes up for some of you guys in the month of November, where perhaps a friend um, tells you about an opportunity and you're a bit hesitant, but you decide to move forward or to take that opportunity. And I see you actually transitioning. So I see you actually moving either from a job, going to a better paying job, or for others of you going to a different department that you haven't done up until now, that is going to bring to you a lot of stability. So a lot of opportunities here in regards to making money. It's going to be almost like for a lot of you guys, I know a lot of Taurus have been struggling the past, like, I want to say three years or so, um, and things have progressively gone better, but we're getting into the better, <laughs> way better, going to higher elevations here, Taurus, for you guys, um, opportunities to make money. Six of Pentacles is all about, you know, giving and receiving. It is about making sure that we're receiving what we're putting out. For a lot of you guys, this could actually, especially those of you guys that are already running your own business, for some of you guys, you start to notice that it's time to up your prices. Why? Because maybe you're starting to get more clients. Maybe you are uh, becoming more busier than usual. Uh, therefore, the time and effort that you put into the work or whatever it is that you're doing um, becomes more restrictive because you have much more to do. Therefore, your value starts to increase. So you start to raise. If you've been thinking, you know, people are struggling, I'm trying to keep, you know, uh, prices um, manageable. You also need to understand that people that know 
your worth, meaning people that know whatever product, whatever it is that you're selling, if it's a very good quality or if it's something that is really um, benefiting their life, they're going to pay that that price. They're going to pay that value. But it comes with the understanding of the confidence that you have in yourself and knowing what your value is or what it is that you're putting out to the universe that again, like I said, you know, it's almost like that, that saying, uh, that goes, um, yesterday's prize. It's not today's prize, right? The value of yesterday is not the same as today. Why? Because obviously people grow and within the growing, uh, the more that people start to take notice of your product, of your service, whatever it is, um, the more value goes up, right? The value of your product or your services goes up. So again, those that are good clients or those of, of um, the customers that you have that really understand or that really value your time or your product or whatever it is, they're going to pay. And sometimes, you know, we do this thing, especially for those that, like I said, run your own business, or even if you work at a company, Sometimes we're scared of asking for that promotion when we know we deserve it. Sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, it's the manager or it's the boss's job to take notice. Um, but believe it or not, sometimes they have other things in their plate and you may go unnoticed. So what the universe is telling you here is don't be scared to ask for what you deserve, for what you know you deserve, because if you don't ask, you won't get. And if you do ask, or if you do make it happen or you go after that, you know, idea that came into your dream or when you were showering and you start to pursue it and you start to see that it is bringing you money, then that's where it's at. You know what I mean? So again, a lot of opportunities to make money for you Taurus out there. So get on that. All right. Now let's go with Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November 2022. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. We have the Seven of Pentacles, Two of Wands, High Priestess, Ten of Cups. Wow. Ten of Swords. Okay. And the Justice card. Okay. So for a lot of you Geminis, I feel like someone is definitely missing you. Um, obviously, the holidays, you know, um, I read somewhere that the holidays is the season where a lot of people really experience depression or um, experience, you know, a lot of sadness uh, because there is a tendency of nostalgia with the holidays, right? Um, and I feel like there is this person in your energy uh, that could have had something or connection with you in the past. Uh, for those of you guys that um, haven't fully moved on from an ex, I definitely see them missing you and thinking about you. And I feel like you've been picking up on that. So if you've been experiencing like them popping in your head or you feel like you're missing them, try to recognize, are you really missing them or are they just um, sporadically popping in your head? And it, it it's almost because obviously they pop in your head, you're going to think of them, right? Um, but try to recognize, is it you that's missing them or is it them that are thinking of you, that you are feeling that energy because they're still emotionally connected or emotionally um, invested in you. I see them looking at you from afar. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with fake accounts on different social medias. And the reason for this is because they haven't fully moved on or they haven't fully let go of the situation where it came to a conclusion. Now, if you recently broke up or there was a recent separation, I do see the opportunity of reconciliation here. I feel like for some of you guys, there could have been a situation where it almost felt like you guys were disconnected. And for some of you guys, it could have been that uh, people outside looking into your relationship had a lot to say or a lot um, to you know, maybe even try to advise, uh, perhaps not advice to the best of your interest, almost like putting things in your head where it created a lot of miscommunication. Um, so I see the restoration of this energy. I do see them uh, wanting to reach out, wanting to connect with you. Um, and, and again, I feel like the balance is being restored at some point in the month of November. So do not be surprised if you hear from an ex or someone from the past popping back up trying to reach out to you or whatnot. 
Um, because there is an opportunity there to reconcile or an opportunity to revisit that relationship. Uh, with the just justice card, it's almost like uh, whatever energies were currently influencing that separation or that breakup is being restored, the balance is found, and therefore they're moving forward or taking action towards some type of communication here. Um, so for a lot of you guys, it could be the revisiting of ex-lovers or people from your past coming back around. If you've been feeling this way, uh, Gemini, about wanting to reconcile or you've been feeling like you're thinking of the person a lot, uh, just take a moment, like I said, to try to acknowledge, is it really your feelings or is it that you're picking up on their energy that they're kind of obsessing over you right now? And that's the reason why you're picking up on that uh, energy. All right, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November, 2022. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of November. 2022. Your sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right. Cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus. You guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button for those of you guys that are new. For those of you guys returning, like the video so you can help our algorithm. Here we go. Cancer. All right. So let's see what's going on with Cancer. All right, we have the full card, Six of Wands, the Hierophant, Five of Cups, Queen of Swords, and Temperance. So I see you guys, uh, for some of you guys, there's been this uh, feeling of when is the right person coming along or when am I finally finding the emotional stability that I've been looking for? And that is something that is definitely going to be unfolding, not just in November. I feel like it's going to go all the way to the month of December. Now, for some of you guys, there is a restoration of karma here. Um, usually the fool doesn't speak to me about karma. If anything, it speaks to me about ending cycles and the beginning new cycle, something that is exciting, something new that's coming towards you. But I feel like because we have the five of cups underneath the fool, there was almost this feeling of, not being complete or a feeling of like there is something missing in my life and the desire to want to search for it. And I feel like for some of you guys, it's almost become somewhat obsessive to find a long-term committed relationship. Now, this is not to everyone, but I feel like what they're saying is you've been so consumed or so busy in making the people that come into your life be the right person to settle with. Uh, that you've kind of ignored a lot of red flags, therefore uh, leading you uh, to end relationships or to end cycles with people that were not necessarily what was best for you to begin with. Um, and I see that that type of energy, it's almost been a reoccurring type of cycle for you guys, which is very much in connection um, with karma. And I feel like there is a releasing of that, a restoration, a uh, a new beginning, a starting fresh, a starting new, being able to see things from a very different perspective. What they're telling you is if you fall into the category of these cancers, right, where it's been difficult uh, to find emotional stability, what they're telling you is that moving forward, it's going to be very important, very crucial for you to learn to put yourself first and to make yourself a priority. So what I mean by that is obviously when it comes to partnerships and relationships, it's very important to meet people halfway, right? We got to put in the effort in order to be able to see the results and it goes both ways. But I feel like in your situation, Cancer, there has been an imbalance in so many relationships that at this point, it's very important to prioritize yourself and your needs. So what do I mean by that? When getting to know someone or dating someone, it's very important not to make it about them but to make it about you. If they hit you up and they want to take you out on a date, does it genuinely work for you? If it doesn't, because that day you're going to work and you're going to come out of work late and you're going to be tired, learn to say, no, I'm busy. Can we reschedule or can we make it on this day instead? It works better for me. By you doing that, what, and I feel like there is a theme for a lot of you guys. Uh, I've been noticing in all the signs right now that I've been doing the readings, the theme is about value. 
obviously with the lunar eclipse, it is about uh, finances, right? The Taurus sign is all about the material things, but it also indicates how we view ourselves or how we value ourselves. And at this point, you've sold yourself short many times in relationships where you self-sacrifice cancer. At this point, what they're telling you, it's about making it about you. Yes, being selfish is necessary because only through that are you going to be able to weed out the bad ones or the ones that are going to waste your time leading you to something more stable or something more long-term, what you've been looking for. And being able to be almost... I don't want to say detached when it comes to dating, but not so focused and 100% committed to the person you're getting to know. It's about learning to balance, right? If you're just in the dating or talking stages, it's casual, which means you have the opportunity to connect with as many people as you want. Don't become loyal to someone that hasn't committed to you, all right? That's going to be very important for you guys for this month of November, like I said, I feel like it's going to go all the way to December, perhaps even January. So that's going to be very important for you guys. All right, now let's move on to Leo. Let's see what's coming in for Leo for this month of November 2022. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November 2022. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right, we have the Ten of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, the Empress, wow. Eight of Wands, High Priestess, Two of Cups. <laughs> Beautiful energy off the bat, I'm going to tell you, Leo, I feel like your love life is going to definitely take uh, center stage in the next coming month. I want to say all the way to January. So what they're showing me is you've been single, or for some of you guys, you've been single for quite a while. We have the Ten of Swords, which is an ending cycle of your singlehood here with the Nine of Pentacles. And the Empress is knowing what you're bringing to the table. It is your worth. It is, uh, you know, having all the ingredients that makes a amazing partner. And I feel like for some of you guys, it's almost like restriction like other people or outside people influencing or having something to say about your love life like leo your expectations are so high of course you're not you know no one's gonna find the perfect partner um that type of thing and i felt like there was almost like a feeling like am i doing too much am i asking for too much um should i settle but then something within you was like no don't settle well don't settle baby because what they're telling you is exactly what you want is coming in for you guys. And I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going to be stuck between three different, three different people. Um, could be almost like a feeling of like, Oh my God, I, what I'm hearing honestly is I wish like what all three have would be combined in one. But what spirit is telling you is that there is one that perhaps is not standing out as much because, um, they're more protective of their energy. I feel like they're not very forthcoming in regards to emotions. And obviously we know Leo loves to be worshiped in a relationship and it's not to be a bad thing. Um, that's just your type of love. That's just the type of love that, you know, you want an intense, passionate type of relationship. And that's definitely what's coming in. However, I feel like I said, I feel like there's three people that are going to be really standing out for you. For some of you guys, it's two people or being confused about two people. Um, I feel like the one you think is not that in like intense or the one that's that uh, almost the feeling like I don't feel fireworks around them is the one that's really going to sweep you off your feet, Leo. But I feel like progressively they will be doing that. It's not going to happen very sudden. I feel like they're going to take their time in getting to know you. Um, but definitely love is coming in for you guys. Now for others of you, I do see that there is an ending cycle. So for some of you guys, it could be walking away from a relationship that is no longer working for you because you feel like at this point, it's necessary to kind of find yourself all over again. Um, especially those of you guys that you've been holding on to a relationship for quite a while and it hasn't been working out, um, I feel like you're going into your era of being like, I don't want to say selfish, but like I've sacrificed a lot at this point. It, I need to make me happy. And that's a healthy way of seeing things because it's important to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, no one else will. 
So if you've been self-sacrificing a lot in relationships, that is part of the past, my lovely Leos, because I definitely do see a beautiful connection coming in for you. And almost like even, you know, people, like I said, I, I'm hearing like a lot of people making comments. Um, so if, if you've heard or if you felt like people tell you your expectations are too high or be more realistic, um, I feel that what spirit is telling you is the reason why that doesn't sit well in your soul is because you know what you bring to the table. And we all know that if there's one thing about Leo's is you guys are extremely loyal to a fault when you genuinely are invested in a person, when you love someone. So again, there's nothing wrong with wa wanting a passionate relationship. Um, but I feel like you're going to be surprised because the one person that may not initially make you feel like there's fireworks everywhere is the one that's definitely going to show you through actions that that's the right person for you, Leo. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November, 2022. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, okay. We have hearts popping out already. We have the Six of Cups, Five of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, the Empress, Ten of Swords. So you guys are closing out cycles, Virgo. You're closing out cycles um, with people from the past, especially if you've been dealing with someone from the past for quite a while and hopes that it's going to turn into something long-term. And it's almost like they're stringing you along or they've been stringing you along. I hear you saying enough is enough. I'm done. So for those of you guys that feel like this person keeps, it, it's almost like the situation I'm sensing is like they come back into your life allowing you to think you being under the impression that they're going to want something because they're actively pursuing you. And then all of a sudden they get, you know, their attention elsewhere and they kind of pull away again as quickly as they come in, they go out and they keep doing that. And I feel like at this point it is necessary to close that cycle in order to be able to embrace the new beginning that's coming towards you. And I do see love coming towards you. But love is going to find you, Virgo, at the end or when you decide to end this, this cycle that hasn't, like, you just haven't been able to let go of. Uh, so for some of you guys, it could work out right at the moment that you decide to break off something or to pull away from a relationship, love comes in. Uh, for others of you, once you decide to close the door to that person from the past that is very inconsistent, that's when love comes in for you. And I see you guys being able to close that chapter and actually move on. Whether you're ready or not, everything is going to point to you understanding and knowing that it's time to release yourself completely. You can't sit there and say you've been like, things are not progressing and it's the same thing because if you're dealing with the person that you've been dealing with for a year and it's still the same circumstance or the same situation, non-committal or non-stable, uh, then you're wasting your time and you need to keep it pushy because people will string you along. Sometimes it's not that they, it's not that they're unable to move on. Sometimes they do it just because they can meaning they'll come back around because they know you will entertain them. They know you will continuously keep opening that door. It's time to shut that freaking door, Virgo, and let them know that you have dignity. Let them know that you know what your worth is and you're not going to waste your time no more. All right? All right. Now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising. <clears throat> Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of November 2022. We got cards flying everywhere, Libra. <laughs> Putting them back in. Okay, here we go. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for Libra for this month of November 2022. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
All right, we have the Eight of Pentacles here, Libra. I see you guys really working or putting energy and effort towards, for some of you guys, could be work, could be a connection or relationship. I see you guys taking inventory as well, like trying to figure out where you're at right now and what it is that you want, what it is that you want to do moving forward. We have the Ten of Swords, ending a cycle, closing the door on something that is no longer serving you. For some of you guys, it could be that you've gone above and beyond to the point of exhaustion of trying to work out a relationship, trying to work out something that is just not working. And finally, being able to close that cycle and choosing to be single or choosing to embrace your singlehood or choosing to embrace a new cycle in your life where you're picking up for some of you guys it could be a new hobby for others of you it could be a new way of making money i see you guys having a lot of options libra in this month of november okay there we go nine of cups five of wands and the seven of pentacles so what I'm seeing is for a lot of you guys work-wise, I feel like you've been dealing with a situation where you've been really working very hard or putting a lot of effort in maintaining or being able to go up the ladder. I feel like at this point, there is a transition that's happening. So for some of you guys, it could be choosing to walk away from somewhere you've been at for a very long time for something new that is definitely going to bring much more money into your life. And it's almost like you're kind of struggling with that because what I'm hearing is like, this is the safety net. I've been here for so long, or this is what feels comfortable for me. But what spirit is telling you right now, it is crucial and important to think big, to really think big. So again, if they are, as an example, if the new job that they're offering you is going to pay you $20,000 more than you would make a year. Uh, at the job where you've been for five years, it's time to embrace that. Regardless if you feel like it's, you know, it's almost like what I'm hearing is there is a need for you to take, um, to take risk in order to be able to see the fruition, in order to be able to see your wishes being fulfilled. With the nine of wands and the five, sorry, with the nine of cups and the five of wands, I feel like emotionally, there is almost this draining energy of not knowing what to choose. Maybe for some of you guys, it could be almost like a situation. The best way I could describe it is like, if what you're trying to do is, as an example, you're trying to be an actor, right? And you're going to these auditions and they're giving you, you know, positions or they're giving you uh, certain uh, type of characters that you're just not wanting to do, um, but it's making you money or it's bringing you money, take those. Because it, it's almost like just because it's not exactly what it is that you want, um, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to get towards where you want to go. It's about knowing that it's okay. You know, for sometimes it's important when it comes to like choosing jobs, for example, um, something I tell my clients all the time, not just because they pay you more means that it's best for you. Uh, because sometimes they may pay you more, but it's a hell of a toxic situation where the people you're working with just be it, it, almost like you're dragging your feet to work. Um, but in your situation, what they're telling you is go for what best suits you at this point in time when it comes to your finances, whatever it is that's paying the bills, go for it, uh, take chances, don't want to make decisions based on what makes more sense. As an example, you've been at a company for five years and you applied at a new job and they're willing to pay you the double of what you're making, but there is a fear of, you know, I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know if like I've been over here, I have seniority, whatever the situation is. What they're telling you is, Take advantage of these opportunities that are coming to you when we're talking about finances, because I do see a major uh, growth for some of you guys in regards to your finances, but you have to get out of what's comfortable for you. You need to 
take that opportunity. Um, even if you feel like it's not even in the field that you wanted to, it may open more doors where you realize or find out that you're actually enjoying doing that type of work. I hope that makes sense. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of November 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's unfolding for Scorpios this month of November 2022? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Scorpio. Ace of Pentacles, Justice card, Six of Swords, Five of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, Four of Swords. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is for a lot of you Scorpios, a lot of financial growth is happening right now. And what they're telling you is, Take full advantage of that. Make the best of it. Um, I feel like you've earned it is what I'm hearing. And usually when I hear that, it indicates like it's been a struggle or it's been like you've been tested and you've gone through it. And I feel like the achievement behind it has more to do with just knowing that it's okay to feel proud of yourself, Scorpio. Um, there is a lot of financial growth and financial stability that's coming in for you. However, I do want to make it a point to understand that for the month of November and December, it's going to be very important for you to be smart about your money, Scorpio, because what's really standing out to me here with this Ace of Pentacles is the roots that are coming out of the pentacle. So to me, the roots signify something that is very connected to you, right? We're talking about family. We're talking about friends, people you love, people you value. But the more this comes out, right, the smaller that pentacle becomes. So that's what's really calling to me. So whatever family member, whatever friend, whatever person you have around you that you feel like it's become a burden for you or like they're expecting some type of assistance or some type of help from you. The reason why they're doing that is because they see your value growing, meaning they may be a bit too close to, to you or to your situation that they're aware how good you're doing and they will try to drain the fuck out of you. So be smart about that because we have here next to the Ace of Pentacles, which is weird. I don't usually get that with the Ace of Pentacles, but that's something that's coming through because we have the Justice card and the Justice is about balance. It is about making decisions, not emotionally, but with your mind, being cold headed, being cool headed. It's making decisions about, as an example, a family member, a loved one, someone you care for is like really struggling. Our natural reaction would be like, if we're well off, our natural reaction would be like, hey, I got you. Don't worry about it. But then you keep doing that and they keep asking and asking. It gets to the point where you're no longer helping them. What you're doing is you're making it comfortable for them. And again, five of pentacles is indicating to me the struggle, right? The struggle of announcing I'm really struggling. I'm really going through it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we have those that are struggling and don't say nothing, right? Because it's not as easy for them to ask for help the way it would be for other people. So with the four of swords, you have to disconnect from something that is draining you um, and it doesn't have to be financial for some of you guys. It could just be friends and relatives that are extremely toxic that bring a lot of imbalance to your life with all their drama. And it's having the need to pull away from that because I see you guys really flourishing and you will continue to flourish as the months progress. Um, I feel like there is a lot of stability coming in for you, but it's important 
to create boundaries and to not allow people to really take advantage of your kind heart, Scorpio. Now, this could be in relationships as well, especially those of you guys that, you know, with everything that's been happening around the world, a lot of people got laid off or they're struggling financially. And, you know, I get it, you know, but if you're, if you've been in a relationship and you've been providing in the relationship and it's been going on for a while, it's time for them to really take action. Eight of wands is quick movement. It is uh, about making things happen, but they are comfortable because you're up here giving them or helping them. So you got to end this cycle to be able to continue moving on and being able to continue building upon that growth that's happening for you right now, Scorpio. All right. All right, my lovelies. So no sugar mama or sugar daddy for you guys. <laughs> Time to talent to get a job or get there. <laughs> and this could be with family and friends as well, you know? All right. Let's go on to Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for you guys for this month of November 2022. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November 2022. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, here we go. So we have the Nine of Pentacles, the Five of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles. So funny. Okay. What I heard when I seen these cards is I see you guys choosing to be single or I see you guys choosing your freedom or to pull away from a situation where at this point you feel like you're better off uh, on your own. And the funny thing about it is what I'm hearing is everyone is wanting or drawing towards you or wanting to get your attention, Sagittarius. But I see you looking at someone from the past where there was a fleeting connection. We'll look further into that. All right, we have the Page of Pentacles, the Two of Swords, and the Three of Swords. Okay, so for some of you guys, this could have been a missed opportunity. It could have been a situation where you were committed or giving yourself to a situation that was perhaps a bit toxic. There was a lot of animosity towards the relationship or towards your partner, or your past partner. Um, and I feel like there was a fleeting moment where you connected with someone temporarily that could have progressed into something long-term with the page of pentacles because they were not so easy to read or because you felt much more comfortable going back to something from the past. It could have been something where now you realize that you're single or that you're choosing to walk away or that you're choosing yourself and to make yourself happy there's almost this feeling of not knowing what to do because you're feeling like you missed out on an opportunity that could have been something amazing for you. And there's regret or there's remorse. However, when I seen the five of wands and the seven of pentacles, it was funny to me because what I'm seeing is a lot of people really trying to get your attention, Sagittarius. And I feel like you're going into a very prosperous type of energy when we're talking about love and romance, where you're getting opportunity choices that are coming in. For some of you guys still restricted or still holding on to something from the past, um, but especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, it's time to let go of the past Sagittarius. Even if some of you guys, for example, uh, if you are a widow or a widower, um, where you still feel like you're not ready. I think that at this point in time, what spirit is telling you, it's time to let go because I feel the three of swords in reverse. So it's time to let go of what's been holding you back. As you can see, this heart has a lot of attachments here, right? And the girl is suffering based on the tie, right? Or the binding to this heart. So it's almost like in reverse, it's time to set yourself free because the swords are coming out, meaning because you've healed. And I feel like you've chosen to be in this energy because it's more comfortable for you, because you aren't sure or you're not fully confident. 
in putting yourself out there, but what spirit is telling you, it's time to free yourself completely Sagittarius. And for those of you guys that are connecting to the previous uh, energy that I was sensing of having some type of regret over a connection uh, with someone that was very fleeting or that was passing, I feel like there is almost this energy of either seeing them, bumping into them, seeing them on social media, or even if you don't have them on social media, it's like friends if you follow them or whatnot, where they're popping up and there's almost this feeling of like, should I approach them? Should I go for it? Should I this? Should I that? What Spirit is telling you is really free yourself from what is the past and it's time to embrace a new beginning. So um, if nothing came from that connection, and again, it was a situation where you kind of chose to go back to what was comfortable. Um, I feel like this person is, yes, they're still single. So I feel like if you want to shoot your shot, now is the time to do that Sagittarius. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Cappy's, my beautiful Capricorns. All right, let's see what's going on for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of November, 2022. What can they expect for this month of November? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Okay, one more shuffle. Thank you. All right, here we go. All right, so we have the Knight of Cups, Six of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, very interesting energy here, Six of Swords, sorry, Four of Swords, Six of Swords, and the Full Card. Okay, I feel like for a lot of you uh, Capricorns, there is almost this revamping of your love life or your love life is going to start to get very exciting. Knight of Cups does indicate to me some type of uh, declaration, some type of communication, someone reaching out, wanting to take you out, wanting to invest in you. This could be romantically. This could be if you run your own business. This could be a partnership that may start to unfold sometime in the month of November all the way to December. I do see someone of great authority or money looking at you or looking at your product and really trying to see if it would be a great investment. So I feel like for some of you guys, an investment opportunity is coming in for you. For others of you, this is love that is surrounding you, but I see a specific individual that is really looking at you. Now, when I see um, the King of Pentacles is always a person to me that is mature but it doesn't have to mean that they're older than you. It could just represent a person. They may be your age or a little bit younger than you, but it is an energy of a person that is very wise, very mature. They've experienced a lot. And as the king of pentacles, it does indicate to me that it is a person that is stable. So whatever their career is, they are very financially well off. And the reason I'm saying that is because the six of pentacles, they are aware that you're worth investing or that you're worth um, really being treated kindly or uh, very generous type of energy, okay, is what I'm sensing. So what they're telling me here is that there is this uh, connection that will be unfolding for you where it's almost going to feel like you're not really that interested, Capricorn. Um, again, it could be not just relationship, it could be an investment, a partnership, someone that comes along and wants to work with you or wants to invest in your company. And you may feel a little bit iffy about it at first, but what Spirit is telling you is really take this opportunity, really give yourself the opportunity as well, especially those of you guys that are really not wanting to connect because you're holding on to something from the past or you're holding on for things to work out with someone from your past. Um, where there's been a bit of miscommunication or no communication at all, or some type of temporary separation. What they're telling you is, it, it's almost like what I'm sensing is a new energy coming in, a new energy that is really going to help you. Uh, not if it's romantically, it's not help you, not just financially, but I feel like it's going to help you in the aspect of really helping you with your confidence. This is a person that is really going to 
make you feel like you're the center of the world, like you are everything to them. And this is something that you're not necessarily used to Capricorn. So I feel like it is a very healing energy that's coming in um, that may potentially turn into something most definitely long-term. Now, for others of you, this is an energy, if we're talking about finances and career, this is an energy almost like a mentor, someone that is maybe older than you and has a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. And the reason why they're wanting to invest or they're wanting to help you grow or even want to bring you on to their job or their business or their uh, if they have their own business, it's almost like they're wanting to mentor you because they're ready to step down is what I'm hearing. And this is a person that, like I said, has the financial backing to actually open a lot of doors for you, Capricorn. So really take this opportunity that's coming through for you guys. And don't let the past hold you back, uh, especially if it's a love offer and you're holding back because of someone that you're waiting to one day they'll wake up and snap out of it. What Spirit is telling you is good things come to those that wait. And my darling Capricorn, you've been waiting for a while. Um it's time, it's okay to feel like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's okay for someone else to take care of you. It's okay for someone to treat you. It's okay for someone to make you feel. Um, as an example, if you're female, to make you feel like it's okay to be in your feminine energy. Uh, not necessarily always being the masculine because Capricorn does have a tendency of doing that in relationships. If you're masculine, it's okay to... Uh, be masculine in your energy and to be treated like a king, even though you're maybe not used to that. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that makes sense. All right, let's move on to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November, 2022. Aquarius, so it's unfolding for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Aquarius, you have the Nine of Wands, the Devil card, the World card, the Three of Wands, the Wheel, and the Eight of Wands, okay. So with the nine of wands and the devil card, I feel like you're finally realizing or coming to the realization of the toxic energy in your life, Aquarius. Um, it's almost like understanding that you're going into the next cycle of your life and being okay, as an example, being okay with making your career and your finances a priority. Even if other people are telling you, you know, when are you going to get married? Why aren't you dating? Why aren't you this? Why aren't you that? Or why don't you have kids? That type of energy. And it's almost like I, I feel like you've been guarded for a while um, when it comes to your desires, your material desires, and a feeling of like maybe sometimes in the past or in past relationships, you've had to settle or you've had to uh, be okay with certain aspects of a relationship that didn't necessarily work for you. Um, but at this point, I feel like you're becoming, or there is a need for you to become more selfish and selfish in the aspect of saying things out loud, even if it makes you uncomfortable. So what I mean by that is a lot of the times um, when we want certain things, when we want to manifest certain things, or when we're trying to draw in certain things into our lives, Sometimes there is a little piece of us that feels that we don't deserve it or that feels like that it probably won't ever happen, even though you really want it to happen. So we have a tendency of not saying it out loud because it makes us feel foolish. I hope that makes sense. Um, but what Spirit is telling you is at this point, it's okay to say it out loud because when you say it out loud, you can hear it. And then kind of create this not giving a fuck about what other people opinionate about your life. And it's your life. And when you ascend, meaning when you go into the astral realm, when you pass away, when we die, um, you're no one's going with you. You're going on your own. So it's time to understand that 
this path that you're in right now, this living experience is for you to make decisions about yourself and really get to a point of not caring what other people have to say or what they think about it. Because at the end of the day, the only one that's going to experience or the only one that's not going to experience maybe things you really want to, but you've prevented yourself from because you don't want to offend or because you don't want to, which I know it feels odd me telling you this because Aquarians usually have a tendency of, you know, being the rebel going against the norms. But I feel like there is something that's kept you restrictive or that's kept you small. And it's time to embrace really how different you are and really the quirky qualities about yourself that make you very different and very distinctive from everyone else. And it's okay to want to pursue a career over marriage. It's okay. And I feel like I don't need to tell you this because you guys know this already, but I feel like there is a need to say it out loud. Like what spirit is telling you here is that the world is your oyster, Aquarius. And it is up to you what you make of it. And it is okay to think outside the box. It's okay to want fame. It's okay to want success in your career. It's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you shouldn't, you know, make yourself little to make other people comfortable. Again, I feel like, I don't know why spirits communicating this. I feel like Aquarians are one of the uh, signs that don't naturally need to hear this. You guys already know that. But there is something within you that shies away from truly the life that you deserve and it's okay to want it. So it's okay to say out loud what it is that you want, Aquarius, and it's okay to go on your own journey and to make things your own way um, and not go, you know, the way everyone else or not live a certain type of life. So what I'm saying is if you are happy, as an example, if you are happy uh, being in a relationship where you guys are married but live in different houses, if that makes you happy, like who gives a shit what other people say or what they think? Don't think too much of that because I feel like it starts to influence the relationship or the partnership you have where it starts to become tainted because of what other outside energies have to say or think. Um, if you don't want to have kids, it's okay to not have kids and you shouldn't feel like, a certain type of way because the you know society is making you feel like you're selfish or a piece of shit because you don't want kids like what like if you don't want kids you don't want kids and that's just your truth and own it you know what I mean like so what they're telling you here is you have the world and the wheel <coughs> expansion at its maximum eight of wands quick taking action moving forward three of wands receiving everything you deserve or the universe giving to you everything that you deserve but you have to own it. You have to own it. It's like good things are coming to you, but stop feeling unworthy or stop feeling like you don't deserve it because you're the only one that's holding yourself back. You're the only one that's blocking those blessings. So fully embrace, and I wouldn't necessarily say your shadow side, but the devil is a bit selfish. Um, it is a representation of, you know, what binds us. Um, and binding ourselves to material things or possessions is not necessarily a good thing, right? But in your case, with the world and the wheel and the eight of wands, it's like, it's okay to, to want that. It's okay uh, because you put in the work, because you've gone through a lot, because you've, you know, gone above and beyond, you deserve that. So again, if what you're looking for is a long-term relationship, and just because Aquarians have this thing this reputation of you guys don't necessarily settle for something that is normalized, quote unquote, doesn't, but you do want marriage as an example. Um, don't follow what others are saying. Just because Aquarians have this reputation, like I said, if marriage is something you want and something you truly desire, it's okay to go for that type of committal relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? So whether it's in the opposite of the norm or the norm, um, what they're telling you, it's okay to want things and saying it out loud, is going to help you uh, call it in. 
I hope that makes sense to you guys. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces. My lovely Pisces, last but not least, let's see what's going on with you Pisces for this month of November, 2022. I always try to make these ratings uh, short. <laughs> that never works out. All right, let's see what's going on. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of November, 2022. What can you expect? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. A lot of changes for you Pisces out there as well. All right, here we go. Pisces, we have the full card. Knight of Cups, Six of Swords, Death card here. Ten of Cups, Seven of Swords. Ooh, okay. So what I'm seeing here is, okay, I'm seeing two scenarios. So for those of you guys that have been holding on to a relationship that just has not been working out, and you've been aware of this, a uh, person that is deceitful, a person that is just, you know, full of shit, um, with the death card, keep in mind, we just experienced the solar eclipse in Scorpio. And now we experience uh, the, the lunar eclipse in Taurus. So Scorpio being death, transformation, secrets, uh, being highlighted, right? Coming to light, seeing certain things that maybe were hidden or happening behind our back. Um, and then Taurus the lunar eclipse having to do with value, with materialization, with the physical, um, having to do with value, with value, not just in the material possessions, but value within ourselves as well. There is something you're holding on to Pisces that you haven't fully been able to release. It's almost like a fear that I'd rather deal with this person that is mistreating me or cheating on me um, because I don't know if I'm going to find someone else that I'm going to be able to settle with. Uh, it's almost like choosing that because you feel like there's fear. You're holding on because of fear. And what Spirit is telling you is at this point, the universe is telling you at this point, Pisces, I've shown you what you need to see. I brought to light the things that were hidden, the things that were being done behind your back. And what are you doing about it? Are you choosing yourself, right? Are you choosing to end a cycle, Scorpio, that no longer serves you, that doesn't work for you? Are you choosing that to be able to embrace a new beginning with someone that's going to value you, with someone that's going to appreciate every single aspect of who you are, or are you going to continue selling yourself short dealing with seven of swords? There is a new cycle that you're going into, Pisces, and you got to let go of the shit that no longer serves you. This is relationships. This is friendships that are very toxic. The type of friend that kisses you and says, hi, I miss you so much. And the moment you turn around, they're checking you out and they're talking behind your back to another friend. It is time to let go of the feeling of selling yourself short or the feeling of having to settle. Because in your settling, you're still unhappy. So what is the worth in the self-sacrificing? Now, for others of you, I see that you've walked away from something that you grew tired of, that it became a burden, that it became something you just couldn't deal with anymore. And it took you a while. 
This doesn't have to be relationships. This could be friendships. This could be loved ones. This could be family members. A lot of the time, we know the people that are around us, whether they're good for us or not. But when it's people that we love, that we care for, it's not so easy to walk away from that because you feel like your loyalty should be there, right? Because you feel like I need to understand what they're going through. Like I can just judge them. I can't cut them off. But if you see a reoccurring theme in your life where people are taking advantage of you, where people are not appreciating what you're doing, where you're sacrificing or you're traveling to see your partner because they have a car and they have all the means to come and see you, but yet they're choosing to be okay with the fact that you're going out of your way to travel to see them. It's time you stop doing for those that are not doing for you, Pisces. And with the Scorpio energy and the Taurus energy that we're experiencing with the lunar eclipse, whether you're ready to make those changes or not, the universe is going to wake your ass up. And it you don't want the tower moment. You want to see things, take inventory, come to the realization, is this relationship that I'm holding on to for dear life, um, are they putting effort? Because if they're not putting effort, if they haven't put effort the past two years, they're not going to put effort when you ask them to put effort. At this point, they're comfortable. If you are in an unloving relationship and you feel like you need passion, you need to feel wanted, to, to feel desired, there's nothing wrong with that. You deserve to feel or want that with the partner you're with, right? But if they're just not doing anything to make it happen, it's time for you to cut them out because you also don't want to fall into a situation where you connect with someone else, meaning you step out of your relationship and cheat because your needs are not being met. Because therefore, then you are also a lot like you're dealing with that karma. You're carrying with that karma because you could sit there and say, well, they weren't helping me. Uh, they weren't physical with me. They weren't this. They weren't okay. But you as a grown adult, have the opportunity to speak up and say, hey, you know what? You don't get your shit together. I'm walking away. And if they don't, then you walk away and go start something else. But you can't sit there and say, I started something else because I was missing this in the relationship. Like you chose to step out. You chose to fulfill those needs that were not being met. It's like a never ending cycle and you don't want to carry that new cycle, right? You don't want to start a new cycle carrying the baggage from past relationships. There is something that needs to end. There is a cycle that you need to be honest with yourself about, get to the bottom of it really. For some of you guys is that you love to be in love and you romanticize relationships, but the moment they're challenged or the moment it becomes difficult, it's almost like a feeling of why can't we get to where we were in the past? Why can't it all be beautiful? Well, because love doesn't work that way. Love is a very beautiful thing, but it takes two people to nurture it, to take care of it to water it, to give it light so that it can continue growing and become like a tree. So the roots can grow deep and strong. But it takes two people. You cannot make it work on your own or your partner can make it work on their own. There are certain things that you're choosing to fantasize about without really being grounded. So what they're telling you here is, again, it's time to end a cycle that is not necessarily like it could be toxic if this is a habit of yours. Um, 
but it's a cycle that needs to come to an end in order for you to embrace something new and do it right. For others of you, you know, how many times do you need your partner to step out of the relationship? The wanting and desiring for someone to change doesn't mean they're going to change. And it's something that I always tell clients, if a person, if you look at a person's past and they've been known to be cheaters, like the tendency of a cheater is someone that cannot control the impulse, right? Of being physical with someone. Um, what does that mean? That means that they choose temporary fleeting moments over whatever they have that's been long-term and it's been stable. If a person is willing to jeopardize that, how can you expect them to change? A cheater doesn't change. They just changed partners, right? And then you get the partners that want to fight for them and say, I took your man or I took your woman. And then later on, you find out that they cheated on them too. Not to say that people don't change, but this is a cycle and it's a cycle that needs to end. So it's a cycle that a person has a tendency of doing. And if they've done it and done it and done it, they're not wanting to change. All right, my lovelies, I hope that these readings give you some type of insight, some type of knowledge, some type of wisdom. As always, I want to wish you guys the very best. Stay tuned for new videos going up, more readings going up, more spell work going up. Excited about the holidays. I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.